Now it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. John Pullen received his degree from Urban Studies from VCU in 1987. And he immediately put that degree to work in the planning department in Albemarle County. After three years, he pursued opportunities in real estate development with Inslake Group, a developer of the Innsbruck and in west, in west part of Richmond. As vice president, he oversaw the development of significant commercial and residential projects in Virginia, as well as North and South Carolina. Then, in 1993, he joined the Luck Companies in the real estate division and ultimately served as vice president of real estate. Headquartered in Richmond, the Luck Companies today own three distinct businesses, including Luckstone, the nation's largest family-owned and operated producer of construction aggregates, Luckstone's ecosystem, a purpose-driven business that transforms raw materials into environmental performance products, and Luck Real Estate Ventures, whose vision is to positively impact economic growth through industrial real estate ventures. Now, in 2001, John was named the Vice President of Strategic Development. And in 2009, a few years after he received his MBA, here at VCU, I might add, he became president of the company. You think that's a coincidence? I don't think so. That VCU degree has taken him very far. After three years in that role, he was tapped to serve as Chief's Chief Growth Officer for the Luck Company. Under his leadership, the Luck Company set a goal to grow their businesses beyond Virginia and North Carolina markets. And last year, they achieved that objective with two acquisitions that expanded Luck's footprint into Georgia and South Carolina. These were the largest acquisitions in Luck Stone's 95-year history. Now, John also played a significant role in helping us launch the School of Business Epic Strategic Plan, driving their future business through the power of creativity. You would not find a bigger advocate for creativity in business than today's speaker. So ladies and gentlemen, please let's give a warm welcome to our speaker tonight, Mr. John Pullen. Wow, what an exciting night it is for all of you. Uh, Dean Greer, faculty, staff, proud parents, family, most importantly, the class of 2019, congratulations, good job. I am excited for all of you um, today. I know, I know this feeling, it's a joyous feeling just in the last few years. Uh, both of my daughters have graduated from college, so I know what that feeling of homelessness feels like for you and your families. Um, and, and parents, let me tell you, that tuition check night being, being, being cut next, next semester feels pretty good as well. Um, and to raise the pressure a little bit, when I was driving onto the Siegel Center, uh, there was a gentleman that was uh, managing the parking lot. I stopped, spoke to him for a minute, and he said, who are you? And I said, I'm John Pullen. And he said, well, you're at the top of the list. This better be really good. Um, so about eight years ago, I was sitting at my home office one night, and I stumbled upon a, a TED Talk by Dr. Brene Brown. It was called The Power of Vulnerability. And I saw this video for its first time and realized that it was going to go viral quickly. I don't remember how many hits it had then, but it, right now it's the fourth most popular TED Talk uh, of all time. But at the time Brene Brown did this talk, she wasn't talking about business or leadership at all. She was a college professor at the University of Houston who had spent more than a decade studying vulnerability and courage. She explained that she'd interviewed thousands of people for more than a decade, and to her great surprise, she discovered there was only one variable that separated people who have a strong sense of love and belonging and those who really struggle for it. And that was, those who have a strong sense of love and belonging believe they're worthy of love and belonging. That's it. And as she dug deeper into that population, she found two things. 
She said those folks also had a strong sense of courage and they fully embraced vulnerability. And then she admitted as an analytical person, she hated vulnerability. She knew from her own research that vulnerability was the core of fear in our struggle for worthiness. But as it turns out, her own data was telling her that vulnerability was also her quote, the birthplace of joy and creativity. Well, let me tell you, I saw this video and I'm, it was so validating for me. At the time, I'd been working for a lot of companies for almost 15 years, and there are so many terrific things about our 96-year-old family business. But the fact is, in a family business, we don't have shareholders to satisfy every quarter, so we can take our time and take the long view, and this has served our company very well. We're also in the construction industry, and so I'm surrounded by world-class engineers and highly analytical people. We have this leadership tool at Luck we use to understand each other's behavioral styles. This tool shows that I'm a red, yellow, which means I'm more assertive and enthusiastic. Not surprisingly, it shows that most of my engineering colleagues have a blue-green energy, meaning they focus on precision, accuracy, and order. That probably speaks to many of you when you think about your style. They like to see data and plans before they buy off on a new vision. And you know what? That's exactly the type of people you want in engineering roles. So here I was in a strategy session in our company, trying to be creative, trying to grow the company, and I'm facing a room full of people who are, by their very nature, risk averse. And I think about Dr. Brown's TED Talk, and I'm like, she really knows what she's talking about. Basically, her point is, if you want anything good in this life, you have to be vulnerable and take some risk. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to show this to our leadership team. So I eventually get in front of our leadership team one day and I show them this 20 minute video, this TED talk. And I know most people in the room were probably wondering, what does this have to do with anything? And to be honest, I wasn't yet fully able to articulate why I thought it was so important. But that's always been part of my success, actually. I've always been the person who was willing to throw out ideas before they're understood. Fortunately for me, after her first TED Talk, Brene Brown very quickly began to turn her focus to business. She wrote best-selling books on leadership and her message became relevant to all businesses trying to succeed in this new millennium. I'm sure you've heard of her during the course of your business school education. The fact is, if you want to embrace vulnerability, you must have, you must have any chance of being creative or innovative. And why is that? Why do we have to embrace vulnerability and courage? Well, each of us as humans have the unique gift of having imaginative capacity. And as Sir Ken Robinson says, creativity is the yield of that imaginative capacity. And that imaginative capacity is deep within us. We usually hold it tightly. And when we find that courage and that vulnerability to let it be seen, we know great things can happen. I remember several years ago, our CEO challenged us to go out and explore creativity and look for companies that were leading innovation. Some of my peers wanted to go see Caterpillar. They make really big equipment and they're absolutely a leader in our industry. But I thought, heck with that, let's go to Google, let's go to Apple, let's go to Microsoft, see what they're doing with innovation and creativity. That took vulnerability, telling my CEO, I don't think we're thinking big enough. And so a colleague and I end up flying out to Mountain View, California to meet Google. I don't think there was a person there who wasn't under the age of 30. At the time we went out there, I was 47 years old. I was the oldest guy on the whole corporate campus, easily. So we sat with this group of about three young men and three young women in their 20s, probably mid-20s. And one of the young men sat down with me and said, so, hey man, he might have called me bro, but he said, hey man, what do you guys do for, for your business? And I said, well, we produce construction aggregates for construction in bridges and roads and buildings. And he said, he looks at me very puzzled and he goes, what are aggregates? 
And to, and to be fair to this guy, you know, at Google, he's working on kind of probably global data strategies. And I said, well, let me make it really easy for you. We take big rocks and we make them into little rocks. And he looks at, even, he looks at me even more puzzled and he goes, people actually make rocks? And he goes, I just thought, and this is, this is a true conversation, he said, I just thought when you drove along the road and you saw rocks on the side of the road that they were just there. Um, so the folks at Google told us we've never seen anyone like a mining company on our campus. You're the first ever. And as I'm leaving, I'm having this conversation with this young woman and she goes, why are you here? Like, how does, a, how does a little company, or a mid-sized company, rather, that's in the stone business in Virginia find us in Mountain View, California? And I tell her that we have this assignment to find creative companies. We're an innovative company ourselves. It's a very important part of our brand. And she looks at me and she says, very cool. And I know from my daughters when they say very cool that I've nailed it, so I was really happy about that. But we came home with so much. Uh, including ways to develop process for our own ideation work at Luckstone and Luck Companies. So remember, it pays to speak up and put yourself in uncomfortable places. Dean Greer mentioned that I led Luck's vision for expansion into the Southeast. That's true. At a time when we were doing incredibly well in Virginia, I was one of few saying, we need to grow. We need to, we need to look outside of Virginia. Expanding into the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, that was a huge stretch for our company. And some people weren't sure we were ready, but my answer to that was, we may not be ready, but we have to. Let me tell you, that meant putting my neck on the line. But we did it, and so many young associates at Luck followed our company's courageous example and raised their hands for promotions and opportunities in other states. So fast forward this year, when U.S. News & World Report published its latest growth rankings, we learned that Virginia, unfortunately, had fallen out of the top 10 states for growth. But South Carolina and Georgia had moved into the top 10. So now we're perfectly positioned to take advantage of that growth. So I can testify to the value of vulnerability in a business setting. And I want you all to know, leaving here, as Brene Brown says so eloquently, courage is not a personality trait, it's a skill set. But second, I'm also sharing this with you because I realize while preparing for this address that almost no other university prepares its students to embrace vulnerability and achieve creativity better than VCU. I thought back on my own experience here and what I had learned, and I realized that VCU should stand for the Vulnerability Creativity University. Absolutely. Dean, you think we can get that one done with President Rao? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. That was true when I arrived here in 83, and it's true when I came back in 2004 to get my MBA. There's something very special about this campus and its urban setting. There's something unique about this faculty and the students who choose to come here from all over the world. Coming here for me both times meant learning to get comfortable with vulnerability. Like many DC students, I grew up in a very middle or lower middle class family. Neither of my parents are college educated, so like one third of you graduating today, I needed to face the challenge of being first generation. Like 70% of you, most of my education was funded by student loans, so that was a risk. Like the majority of DC students, I had to get a job to pay the bills. So I worked at Stuffy's Sub Shop on Harrison Street, which is where the hibachi box is right now, before landing a ter terrific year-long internship. I grew up in Williamsburg, Virginia, about an hour here, a town that then was about 12,000 people at the time. So when I came to Richmond, a metro area with, with then about 800,000 people, and I saw VCU, I was like, wow, this is a place where there's so much happening and where I can really grow as a person. VCU wasn't yet ranked the number one public art school in the nation like it is today, but then as now, this place was full of art and artists. Then as now, this place was incredibly, wonderfully diverse. So look around you. 
parents, students, at the faces of this graduating class. You look like America. And this means at this place, you've been uniquely prepared to work anywhere with anyone. In the 1980s, this place was covered with punk rockers. And while you might not be able to conjure up what punk looks like, I'm pretty certain that for many of you, coming here meant having conversations, doing group assignments, and becoming friends with people who are incredibly different from you. In my undergraduate days, we had bands every Friday in Schaefer Court. There's, there's a building there now, but Schaefer Court was literally two brick walls on a stage. And they had bands there every Friday except during the winter. There was punk and reggae and these amazing guys would come from Philadelphia that played funk. Today you've got mind-blowing world-class art exhibitions at the Institute for Contemporary Art. Our business school has artists in residence like Noah Scanlon and, and the Richmond Symphony. There's a culture here in this sometimes edgy urban environment that invites and encourages exploration and courage. I was on the campus about three days ago and I was walking down the Broad Street quarter part of the campus and there's a man approaching me with a large white bag. It looked like a Target bag. There was a box in it. And I could see that he was kind of headed my way. And eventually he walked up to me and said, will you hold my bag? And you know, when that happens, you get this sense of like, what do you do here? Do you dismiss this person? Do you keep going? So I said, sure, I held his bag. And he just pulled his pants up and straightened his shirt, wiped his face and took his bag and walked off. <laughs> what a wonderful experience that was. I'm in this urban environment and these things happen randomly the way they happen only in a place like VCU. This is not gonna happen at the University of Richmond campus. This isn't gonna happen at UVA. It's gonna happen uniquely here at VCU. And let me tell you, VCU taught me how to work with people from Prague to Mountain Valley, California, to how to work with executives to folks that work in operations in the field. I learned that here at VCU. My point of all this is that VCU has a long, long history of being a creative place. Creativity is the brand of this university. In the mid-2000s, and I want you guys to really listen to this, this is, this is probably the most important point as far as where you're headed from this day to your careers. In the mid-2000s, Wall Street Journal reporter Dan Pink wrote a book called A Whole New Mind. He advocates aggressively in that book for creativity. In fact, he says in this emerging technology-based fourth industrial revolution we're finding ourselves in, creativity will be the only remaining sustainable competitive advantage. Artificial intelligence can't compete with humans on creativity. So what does that mean to you guys? What does that mean? That means you, you leave this place with this perspective that you've gotten from this fabulous staff. You've read, you've connected dots, you've built relationships, you've learned from each other. And so what is necessary for you to take that energy, that creativity out into the field with you? Well, first, you need to think about embracing vulnerability and being courageous. Because you're trying to reveal that imaginative capacity you have in your workplace. Let me tell you, businesses really need it and they're gonna need it even more. And you're gonna be very well prepared if you work on that for this fourth industrial revolution that we see. Autonomous vehicles, artificial intelligence, data centers being built everywhere. It's pretty amazing. But VCU School of Business Class of 2019, I'm here to tell you, you've got it naturally. So many universities today are struggling to reinvent themselves around creativity. Folks, this is nothing VCU has to work for. We don't have to create it, we own it here. So 
So when you leave here tonight, remember that you have a business degree from the Vulnerability Creativity University. You've been built to thrive in places that challenge you. That's why you chose to come here. You've taken out loans and you've taken on risk. You've marinated in meaningful connections with people from different cultures and lifestyles. I'm telling you, there's no one you can't compete with and there's nothing you can't do. It's time to let yourself be seen and have the courage to reveal your gifts to others. Now get out there and show the world what VCU stands for. Good luck. Thank you, John, for that inspirational talk. It is certainly hits home with me personally, and I want to thank you and your company for your leadership and being great partners of VCU School of Business. So let's give John Pullen a big round of applause for those inspirational worlds.